Good afternoon for everyone. Uh, welcome to Education Higher Education Fair Indonesia 2021 Institution Talk Show. So this is the very last season uh, for the session of the talk show. Please allow me to introduce myself. My name is Muhammad Maulana Taufik or Molly as your moderator for this session. So uh, for this time, uh, the last session, uh, we are going to talk or having a chat with our speakers with our speakers regarding focus on a research university part two. So if you guys um, bear with us uh, since the beginning of the session, yes, we had a chat uh, with some of the university regarding of the research university part one, and now we are having in part two. Okay, join us for this session. We have from Leiden University. Hello to Mr. Malik Bellen as a manager for international recruiting and international alumni affairs. Hello, Pak Malik. Hello, apa kabar? I'm very well, thank you. How are you doing, Pa? Fine, and uh, enjoying the rain outside. I know, right? <laughs> I <can> never stop. <laughs> And also connect uh, from the Netherlands, um, we are going to have, uh, we are going to introduce from Maastricht University, Lian Kroll as Recruitment Counselor. Hello, Lian. Hello, everybody. Hi, good afternoon. You are in the Netherlands, right? Yes, uh, rainy as well, but uh, oh, I'm, uh, I'm inside. It's, good. it's a good day to be inside. <laughs> <laughs> and also we have Mbak Tantri Maulina as a program consultant from a rector at a university. Hello, Mbak Tantri. Hello. Uh, hello from the Netherlands. Uh, I'm a bit luckier. Uh, it's not raining. Gloomy, but not raining. So <laughs> I was only... <laughs> It's really lovely to see you guys connect with the internet connection, of course, with the virtual and European higher education fair. Again, uh, I just want to invite to all the audience and participants, if you would like to have the questions, you can type on the comment box or the chat, uh, sorry, on the comment box or the chat box on the YouTube channel. Uh, some of the colleagues of the institution, they're going to reply as soon as possible, but some of the questions, one of my colleagues will transfer to my screen over here and then I'm going to read the question to the speakers. Okay, for now we do have the topic focus on a research university. Some of the audience might know regarding research university, this is the university that more depth into the, the, the academic, okay, to the knowledge of the study program. Uh, we are going to start the first questions to the three of the speakers. I think I'm going to start with uh, Pamarik. Pamarik, why study in research university instead of applied sciences? Over to you, Pamarik. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, well, first of all, I want to make it clear that sometimes people think that studying at a university of applied science is lesser than at a research university. Uh, but it's not lesser, it's just a different approach. So you don't have to uh, doubt the quality of an applied science university in the Netherlands, but it's a different approach in terms of education. Uh, and I think, well, it's very black and white, but at an applied university, you learn to become a professional. So you learn the skills to enter the industry, to become a journalist or a nurse or a legal assistant, a marketeer, etc. And the difference with the research university is that um, you learn the skills and competence to do research and to also um, yeah, discover new things that could move the discipline ahead. And uh, that's also why that you see there's a difference in terms of uh, degrees. At the Applied Science University, the focus will be on a bachelor study <clears throat> and sometimes also with a master. But at the university, you can continue with a PhD, which is a full-fledged research position. Um, sometimes in some disciplines, it gets a bit blurred because you also, of course, have research is applied to universities. And some people say, if you study law, that's also applied. But I think that's basically the main difference. At a research university, you uh, have to learn how to do independent research using uh, your own logic, uh, using uh, argumentation, and come to a conclusion. Okay, thank you, Patarik. Over to you, Mbak Andri. Would you like to add something from this question? Uh, yeah, I think it's always based on what you're passionate about. So it's not always uh, research university is always better than the applied sciences. Not 
I totally agree with you, Pamari. So uh, it's also about passion, uh, which one you have your patience uh, more. Uh, so if you're more passionate in research and you don't really know what you want to do in the next uh, five or uh, four, five, five years and you want to have, you want to broaden your options, then you can always go to a research university and you might go to a PhD in the, for the next level and so on. But if you already know what you want, I, I do know what I want. I, I want this. I want to become a nurse and that's what I want. Then you can always go to a research, uh, uh, to applied sciences uh, university or you want a le legal, um, uh, um, in, uh, you want to have a career in the, in the, in the legal uh, field. So you, can all, you, all, you already know that. So you can always go directly to applied sciences at university. So yeah, totally agree with Pamari. Uh, uh, thank you for that. Uh, I think that also, uh, will help uh, the audiences, whether um, they want to go to Applied Sciences University or to the Research University. Thank you, Masmali. Thank you, Batantri. Over to you, Leanne. Oh, yeah. I think something else to remember is that certain um, fields or studies uh, may only be uh, available at a research university or at a University of Applied Sciences. So, for example, if you want to do physiotherapy, then you'll be going to a University of Applied Sciences. But if you are going to be interested more in uh, studies like philosophy, then uh, you'll end up at a research university. Um, so keep that in mind. And otherwise, I do, I'd say even though we um, tend to focus a little bit more on the practical and professional at, uh, uh, at the University of Applied Sciences, at the same time, you will have lots of opportunities for practical experience at a research university as well. Many uh, programs now include either mandatory or optional internships and exchanges uh, and extra honors programs or projects to work on to get more uh, practical experience. So um, yeah, that's, I think, a few things to add. Okay, thank you. Well, um, I do believe that uh, all the speaker you, uh, you you you'll daily uh, get in touch with the students more and more, especially these days because now we do have like an online consultation, online platform. Um, I there's one question that uh, uh, in my mind that could you uh, please mention and how do you select? Uh, your applicants to get admitted into your university because these days uh, Indonesian students is really um, have like a lot of interest with the, your your institution especially for Leiden. Uh, so, but Andre, could you please explain to us like how do you select your applicants to get admitted into a uh, Red Belt University? Okay, uh, thank you, Ms. Molly. Um, so uh, there are of course several uh, stages, but uh, I think one of the most important one is the interview part because then the, the uh, selection committee really get to see and to uh, get in touch with uh, how the person is motivated, uh, how's the prior knowledge, because prior knowledge is an important thing, uh, an, an important thing when you're uh, applying for the next level, let's say for a master program. Uh, you, have to, you have to have uh, the same starting level, if, if not same, at least similar uh, 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 starting point. Uh, so you we can be sure that you're not, um, you, you won't get uh, left behind during the, the, the uh, study. So uh, that's, I think, how we decide uh, to uh, admit our student, uh, the interview, the previous knowledge. The grade, I think uh, grades um, can always be um, compromised and uh, um, be, in a in a in a later uh, consider consideration, uh, so the, I think the most important part is the interview and the pro the previous knowledge. Uh, over to you, Mas Mali. Okay, thank you, Batantri. And how about at Master University? Union? So the admissions procedure, of course, differs per program. So um, keep in mind that uh, if you have a program where it's an open application, then we. Uh, in general, welcome everybody who's eligible. So you won't, we will sometimes have optional matching procedures, which I would recommend students to always make use of because it'll give you a bit more insight into what will be expected of you and if it uh, would match with your expectations. Um, if you're looking at more selective programs, 
assessments or um, numerous fixes programs, then keep in mind uh, your personal motivation and ambition while uh, applying for these programs. Because what we, of course, would like to see in students who choose uh, the program at our university is why um, they decide to do this at Maastricht University because of course for liberal arts and sciences, for example, there's different places in the Netherlands to study uh, these programs. And we expect you to have uh, a specific idea about uh, the environment that we would provide, the kind of focus that you would bring into your studies, the kind of ambitions that you have. So indeed, then your motivation and following the interview will be uh, the most important uh, aspect. Um, so just keep in mind that you really um, focus on what makes a program uh, stand out for you at a certain institute. Right, thank you, Leanne. But before I move to Pamari, so numerous fixes is a deadline for the certain study program uh, that has a limitation of the uh, students or there is a quota uh, for the students uh, that is going to be admitted. And for your information as well, for the numerous fixes deadline is every 15 of January. So be sure that if your study program is numerous fixes, uh, don't put it on the very last deadline, please make sure again, and then please check on the university website. Okay, Pamarik, again, uh, with the same questions, um, how do you select your applicants to get admitted into Leiden University? Yeah, I think I'd, I don't have much to add, actually, um, uh, what has been said by Lian and, and Tantri. Uh, I think for, for all research universities, the procedure is more or less the same. You have a first step, which is the administrative selection, <clears throat> which is quite clear cut. Do you uh, fulfill the requirements, the basic requirements to, to uh, apply for a program? And then, of course, the second part is then there will be a selection based on several parameters. And again, like Leanne said, it could be um, based on whether the program is selective or not, or whether it's open. Um, there, there could be additional documents that could be asked. Um, there could be a test. Um, there could be an interview. Uh, but I guess, again, I have to stress the same what Leanne says. The most important definer, I think, is your motivation letter. So explain why you want to study uh, what drives you, what is your motivation to choose this program and then just use the university because that's where you can stand out from the rest because you have you are a bit in competition with a lot of students that are applying for the same program. All, have, all of them have their bachelor degree, all of them have good grades. So why do you think we should um, um, accept you? And also uh, the grades are important in some cases if you apply for uh, scholarships, because some of the scholarships are merit-based. But in terms of selection, we rather look at the whole package, um, the subjects that you have uh, done uh, during your bachelor, if you apply for master, because that really gives a more insight in whether you have the sufficient background to enter a certain program. Okay, thank you so much, Pat. Uh, regarding with the uh, alumni. Um, so once we finish uh, our study in the Netherlands, uh, for sure, uh, the students would like to have like a really good career in the Netherlands. They want to start a really good career uh, in, the, in the Netherlands, especially with the benefit of Zutier visa as well. Uh, I think I'm coming to uh, Leanne first. Is there any working opportunities in the Netherlands after the graduation? And how will university help the alumni to secure the job? Yes, so um, almost all universities in the Netherlands uh, will have career offices. So um, please uh, feel free to make use of that during your studies as well. Uh, you can go there for different opportunities for career advice. Uh, if you want to do uh, a test to see if you uh, fit certain fields or certain companies, if you want to have your CV checked um, and a lot of study associations or universities will also have career fairs to get you in touch with um, companies in the region or uh, to give you a sense of uh, what kind of careers uh, students from your program or from your university have gone on to. Um, as to working in the Netherlands, uh, currently the job market is actually uh, quite good because there's lots of vacancies. Um, it really depends a little bit on the field that you want to go into because there's different area areas and regions within the Netherlands which will be a little bit more suited to certain careers. Um, for example, um, here in Maastricht, we are located quite, cl quite close to Brussels, so it could be interesting for you if you want to do something with diplomacy or international relations. 
but of course Leiden and The Hague is also a hotspot for that. Um, but at the same time, we have DSM, which is the largest chemical company in the Netherlands close by. So you could also look at biomedical or chemistry careers. And the same counts, for example, for Eindhoven or Delft, which is more technology focused. Rotterdam has its sport for logistics. So really think closely about the field that you want to go into. And then uh, you can see what opportunities there are within the Netherlands. And there's um, also a wide range of companies available. You can work at a startup, you can work at an international company, uh, you can work for the government. So um, as long as you um, try to get an idea through internships or through side jobs uh, or through um, other connections um, to get more of an idea of how you want to continue your career after your studies, there's lots of opportunities available uh, within the Netherlands. Okay, thank you so much, Leanne. For the lady university, especially for, Ma, for Pamarik, um, could you mention any interest, interesting research that are currently ongoing in the university, Pak? Uh, how much time do I have? Oh. <laughs> Plenty, <laughs> Pak. <laughs> Last question. Because as a... As a <laughs> Roll it, Pak. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I, I will keep it short. Because, yes, we all research universities, so... Um, all the faculties have graduate schools and institutes, so a, a lot of research is being done by all the research universities. Um, but maybe I can focus more on the research that we do with Indonesia because it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's an EHA for Indonesian uh, uh, students. Um, so we have seven faculties and every faculty is uh, active in Indonesia on research and already for decades. Um, so the medical faculty, of course, is, is uh, as most medical faculties all over the world, is uh, focusing on, on, on COVID-related research, uh, amongst others. Uh, so the Janssen, um, the Janssen um, uh, drug was, was developed in Leiden uh, at the Bioscience Park, the, the biggest ice Bioscience Park in, in the Netherlands. But we also focus on immunology. Uh, to also prevent future outbreaks of, of these kinds of pandemics. Uh, but we also do research in Indonesia on tuberculosis and diabetes. Um, in the Faculty of Law, already uh, also a long-standing uh, cooperation with Indonesia, but mainly focusing on social legal studies. How does the law impact on the society? Um, of course, uh, from um, the Faculty of Humanities, uh, focusing on the cooperation in, in, um, on history, joint history, of course, but also to make Dutch sources uh, available for Indonesian researchers. Also, um, research on uh, Islam studies. Um, it has also been going on for a long time. Uh, linguistics, specifically linguistics in Eastern Indonesian, uh, especially uh, languages that are feared to die out and has to be described. Um, and we do uh, excavations in Trinil in the field of archaeology and so on and so on. So uh, I think every university has a large uh, menu of, of research cooperation with Indonesian counterparts. Um, and uh, that is going very strong, although COVID made a dent, maybe in that respect, but the, it didn't really uh, have much impact in the uh, intention and then the uh, uh, eagerness to keep working together on these research areas. Okay, thank you so much, Pak for the explanation. I'm going back to Batandri from Red Belt University. Batandri, is there any, uh, there's a question regarding about exchange studies opportunities in Red Belt. Could you please explain about it? Is there any opportunity for Indonesian students who would like to have exchange um, a program in uh, Red Belt University? Yes, this is one of my favorite topics, I think. <laughs> Uh, uh, because I've, I've once uh, joined the, the exchange students, that's how I got um, in touch with Ratboat in the first place. So uh, yes, there's uh, plenty of opportunity to have uh, uh, an exchange student uh, programs. Uh, currently, I think the most uh, uh, ongoing one is between the medical faculty and um, uh, several uh, universities in, in Indonesia. Um, uh, I'm attached with the Pajajaran University, so uh, I know for sure that a lot of uh, um, exchange, to, uh, exchange uh, program are 
going on at the current uh, time. But uh, of course, COVID is somehow decide uh, it's more fun if uh, it gets in the way. So uh, for the time being, it's a bit suspended. But next year, hopefully, hopefully, when things are more back to uh, normal, then we can uh, go on with uh, the exchange student uh, program. But yes, yes, we have plenty of uh, that opportunity. And uh, it also comes with a uh, scholarship. So um, uh, as long as um, COVID agree to move a little bit out of the way, then hopefully next year it will be back on track. Hopefully, of course, we are, we cannot wait uh, to have like our new normal life without any um, COVID situation and also COVID restriction. Okay, I do still, um, I just still invite uh, to all the audience who watch us uh, through our YouTube channel, could you please uh, put your uh, questions on the comment or chat box? So uh, one of my colleagues will transfer the question to the screen. We still have one uh, question, of course, to, uh, I think this is for Leiden, uh, for Pamarik, uh, from Teresia Pujipa. So uh, the question is, I have a plan to continue my master's degree in Leiden University. If, is it possible if I uh, if I take law faculty, but her background is from the Bachelor of Economics? Well, um, that's going to be a challenge because as Ibu Tantri already mentioned, um, it should be linear. Yeah. So a, a master degree is actually a continuation of the knowledge that you have received during your bachelor. And if there's a too much difference, it's quite difficult to enter a master program if it's not in line with your bachelor program. There are some exceptions for some disciplines, but with the law and especially with the law programs that we offer, um, then I would probably have to say that it would be uh, almost difficult, yeah, not, not, yeah, almost impossible to, to enter with the uh, economics bachelor to a law degree uh, at any university unless it's not a law degree but a master of science degree and that university is not in this talk show right now but there's a university in the netherlands that offer economics and law which is a master of science degree um and uh, i'm not sure but leon maybe can can add i'm not sure whether that would be also possible in maastricht but in leiden it would be to be honest it would be quite difficult if it's not linear Okay, thank you so much, Pamarik. I think, Lian, would you like to add something? Could uh, maybe uh, your answer might help uh, Teresia Puji regarding her um, intention to, to, to have a law uh, degree, but her background is from the Bachelor of Economics. Um, yeah, so it depends really, uh, because of course, as um, I also, uh, also mentioned, there are certain requirements to fulfill. Um, of course, if you have certain proof or if you have certain uh, have done certain courses, then you could always prov uh, provide them to the board of admissions, and they can tell you if you either would need to uh, prepare additionally by follow it by getting certain certificates or. Um, following certain courses, or if indeed you are eligible for exemption. But yeah, the further um, topics are removed from each other, the more difficult it will be. So unless you have a certain relatability within your bachelor's degree that would allow you to move on to a different master's, um, it's not necessarily, it's uh, going to be difficult to uh, continue directly without um, needing to do any extra, um, needing to do anything extra. Okay, thank you, Leanne, for the addition. And of course, to all the audience and also for the st Indonesian students who would like to apply to the uh, Dutch higher education, uh, so just please read the additional, additional requirement as well on their uh, university website because some of the information might be too general, but if you uh, jump into the website, you can find a very specific requirement that needs to be Done. Okay, so I think uh, one of my colleagues shared the uh, website of every single university at the moment. You have University of Leiden, Master University, and also Red Belt University. Okay, next questions before we are going to have a, a closing statement. I think I'm going to Batan Tri, but could you please um, mention some of the majors that are well known for? its competitiveness uh, from Red Dot University. Over to you, Mbak Andri. Uh, 
Uh, thank you, Ms. Molly. Uh, I think, uh, well, all faculty are uh, well known. I have to say that. It's, I don't think it's fair to just mention one faculty. I think all of our faculty are well known. Uh, we have seven, fa seven uh, faculties and um, I think what uh, has been uh, the, the faculty that has been very much engaged with the Indonesian student is uh, the Faculty of Medical Sciences, uh, Faculty of Law. Uh, the, the, the art faculty, I think, uh, no, Ms. Molly, it's not fair to, to pick one. It's not fair. All of our faculties are, are competitive and they're all as good. But yeah, the, I'm, uh, my background is uh, medical sciences. So uh, not that medical sciences is the best, but yeah, we're quite competitive. So uh, we're well known, uh, especially for our research uh, 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 collaboration with Indonesia, with Indonesian universities. Um, we have also a lot of exchange uh, program between uh, the, the medical faculty in Ratboat, uh, the medical sciences fa faculty in Ratboat with Indonesian universities. So. Uh, yeah, but all faculties are well known, uh, Ms. Molly. <laughs> of course, correct. And especially, I think I would like to add some information as well because the uh, Red Bat University is participating on the Orange Web Scholarship. So you might want to check it out uh, what it's offers. Okay, thank you so much, Patandri, for the answer. I think I'm going to Pamarik for the first one. Uh, to give the closing statement and also to promote University of Leiden, but you have a time of five minutes, okay, to tell us and also to convince the audience regarding about University of Leiden. Over to you, Pamari. Yes, uh, thank you. Um, <clears throat> am I okay? Well, all the information about Leiden, of course, is is can be found on the website. Um, and um, I see Leiden as a as a traditional research university. We are the oldest university in the Netherlands, so I will say we are rooted in tradition, but we also uh, innovation innovated uh, uh, research university. So um, a lot of focus is also on innovation of research. Um, and in terms of of, of closing statement, um, I think um, this is more for the students, uh, and I think it's also a little bit what I already stated last year. Uh, you have to choose the program that best fits you with the university that best, best suits you. And that's the kind of, of decision that has to be made by the student uh, it's themselves. Uh, all the research in the universities in the Netherlands are good. So you don't have to doubt about any, any problem with quality. Uh, it's just that the research universities have different foci and different, uh, of course, a differentiation in programs that they offer. And based on that, you make, you make you can make the choice. In your preparation, I would say uh, preparation is, is, is three quarters of the work. Preparation in terms of study the program that you would like to follow. Uh, go in deep, delve deep into the websites, into the programs, contact the program director or the program coordinator if you have questions, if something is not clear about whether your background is sufficient enough to apply for the course. Um, look into your own network or connect with the uh, PPE. So the uh, student association in, in, in the town that you would like to go, they have Facebooks and websites and you'll probably find a student who is doing the same program that you are likely to, to apply for. And then you get firsthand information about what it's really like to study that particular program. Um, and also try to connect with alumni. And uh, Nuffy can help with that. Uh, there's a large uh, alumni association and in Indonesia that's very active. Oh, it's getting thunder here. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so there's a large alumni network. And also, if you if you would like to um, to get in touch with uh, Leiden alumni, we uh, we have a, our own Leiden alumni association in Indonesia, and we have a very active uh, uh, student association in Leiden, which is as actually the oldest student association from Indonesia and the world. So that will be my statement. Just prepare and uh, prepare uh, as, as much as you can and make the, to make the right choice. And Thank that you. could be Leiden, of course. Thank you so much, Amarik, of course, Leiden. Over to you, Leanne. Um, do you have any closing uh, statement also to promote uh, your institution uh, for this session? Um, well, at Master University, um, a few things to uh, keep in mind that sets us apart from other research universities is the problem-based learning system. So it's uh, a more student-centered education method where you will 
uh, be more actively engaging with um, the um, with your study field and with case studies. So it's uh, uh, on a smaller scale and it requires a little bit more effort from students to actively present, actively research and actively speak up and present. Um, another thing is that we have a lot of interdiscipl uh, interdisciplinary or multidisciplinary programs uh, that accounts for many other universities. So uh, if indeed you want to combine certain topics like economics and law or um, economics and data science or um, law and the medical field, then be sure to look for um, those options as well, because within the Netherlands and at our university, there's lots of different options to combine different topics. And uh, if you uh, are not sure what you want to specialize in yet, or if you have multiple interests that you would like to uh, explore, then there's lots of options for that as well in uh, the Netherlands and also at our university. Um, also definitely consider the uh, kinds of cities that um, we have uh, universities at in the Netherlands. So of course there's the big cities like Amsterdam and Utrecht, but smaller cities like Leiden, Nijmegen and Maastricht uh, that are um, also in different parts of the Netherlands are very, uh, have a very different atmosphere. And um, um, pretty much everywhere in the Netherlands, it's very international. We are located very close to the borders of Germany and Belgium. So if you have any interest in institutions or um, exploring those regions, it's very easy uh, from over here to get there. Um, and Netherlands as a whole is very internationally focused and minded. So um, everybody speaks English quite, uh, very well. Um, you are, of course, welcome to learn Dutch, um, but for most cases, it won't be necessary. Uh, so you will definitely find a very international welcoming environment. Uh, and we hope, of course, that uh, the Netherlands will become sort of your way, uh, home, away from home. Um, and yeah, uh, because we have been in a pandemic, there's lots of opportunities to also discover our universities online. So we have, we have online open days, we have online experience days or um, other faculty or program specific events that can take uh, place online. So definitely check those out as well if you have certain program studies or universities in mind. And we hope to welcome you uh, anytime soon. Thank you so much, Alien. Okay, over to you, Amba Landry. Uh, could you please give us the closing statement and also uh, promote your institution? Thank you, Maswali. Uh, so, hi, everyone. Um, I hope this session uh, allows you to dive uh, a little deeper about uh, studying in the Netherlands in several research uh, university and provides you with the information that you need uh, about the research univers universities and uh, Radboud University in particular. Uh, just in case uh, uh, you weren't here from the very beginning or you didn't get the chance to follow the, the, the uh, uh, seminar from the uh, start. So you can always go to uh, www.ru.nl slash English for more information. Uh, we have um, many, many programs in bachelor uh, stage or in uh, master stage. Uh, from In the bachelor program, we have uh, from uh, biology, chemistry, psychology, and in the master programs, I think we have one of the most booming now is the artificial intelligence uh, study, and then also uh, biomedical sciences, uh, uh, psychology, a lot of, uh, uh, of measures, so you can always uh, go to the website and see which one uh, suits you the most, and see about the uh, application procedure at the admission requirements and etc. Uh, there are clear guidance uh, about where to go, what, what to click uh, in the website. Uh, we ca you can also have information about the scholarship that we provide. Uh, we have, I think we have a, a lot of uh, scholarship for Indonesian students from OTS, the Orange Slip Scholarship to the uh, uh, Radboud uh, Scholarship. So we have a lot. You can always try uh, which one suits you the best. Uh, there are also information if, in your own language. So there's definitely an information in Bahasa, I know that for sure. Or you can always send um, an email to uh, study slash uh, information at ru.nl uh, or WhatsApp. You can always WhatsApp uh, the, the uh, admission uh, officer at, this, uh, at 31625 319096. Um, to close, I hope you will get to experience what I uh, experienced, uh, a high quality education in a beautiful city catered by, uh, and I have to say this, um, everyone works by their heart, so it's a personal touch. Uh, 
But please don't take my words on it. Prove it yourself. I'll see you in Rakot. Thank you, Masali. <laughs> Thank you so much, Andatanti, and all the speakers that joined with us uh, this afternoon. So it's really lovely to see you, and hopefully we can see each other in person. Yeah. Um, and then to wrap up uh, this session, of course, uh, for all the Indonesian students who would like to apply to the Netherlands um, higher education, please read all the information through their website, and also you still have a chance to um, ask the questions through the virtual booth as well. And then uh, last thing that I really want to uh, recommend that please uh, do not put it on the very, very uh, last deadline because this is the perfect timing that if you would like to apply to the university because they are now they're open, okay? The deadline is still all the way up until April or May, except for the numerous fixes uh, study program, the deadline is every 15 of January. Please read carefully all the requirements on every study program because some of the study programs might have the additional documents. So please be mind that you read carefully on university website. Okay, so I think we are at the end of the session for this uh, talk show. Um, my name is Molly, um, I'm signing off. And of course, you still can have a chat through the virtual booth on every institution. Thank you so much for joining with us and have a lovely weekend. I know it's a bit rain, uh, not so bit rain, but it's heavy rain outside. Please uh, stay dry and also stay well. Thank you so much for joining us. Bye-bye. Thank you. See you. Thank you, Tantri. Thank you, Liam. Thank, Thank you, Molly. See you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you so much for Tantri, Liam, and Tomari. Uh -huh, sorry.